All right, I'll already start off getting some creep equilibrium here using those power cards. Kind of messed that one up, unfortunately. Yeah. That did not get the... He was hoping to pull in all the melee creeps, and you want the ranged one to push ahead, but no bueno. A little unfortunate. So... LD mentioned Musica uh, playing that carry Lesh, and that's actually pretty fresh in my memory as well. I remember casting that game. What do you think about the core Lesh, especially in the context of this game here? A lot of damage output. It's all going to be it's going to be entirely built around keeping him alive, and that's where you've got your mech buyer in the Viper. You've got an Axe who his blink timing is going to be very important for this team. So I imagine that's what Malaysia is thinking by putting the Phoenix top to support the Axe to guarantee he can have some decent farm because. Without an Axe Blink Dagger, this last track will not stand a chance of dealing out damage in a fight. Yeah, definitely. Arteezy eh, getting uh, not as much space as he'd like. This creep wave going to push into the tower. Only one CS right now. Still plenty of room to recover for him. And what do we expect out of this mid lane? Viper versus Shadow Fiend. Well, S4. Be off to a little bit of a slow start, though. 4-0 and zero already. Doing all right getting over that first hurdle. Yeah, first, first couple creep waves, first two minutes, it's Viper favored. But as SF gets levels, it kind of evens out, and then SF takes over as far as the, the mid-game farming efficiency. So mm -hmm. uh, I don't imagine S4 is going to have the most fun time, but he also shouldn't be losing this lane. He should be able to hold his own. Well, now Puppy is rotated up towards the top lane. Blocks out Johnny a little bit here. Just harassing with the Fisher for now, but they will make it a safe lane try for Secret, and they really want to prioritize this farm on Arteezy. Yeah, but still a high. So far, already 7 CS. Your Phoenix is causing some problems as far as his harass goes, and... Not really guaranteeing complete free farm for the PA. Not quite. Mid lane, still going the way of the Viper for now. Ketchikimba dominating fairly effectively, keeping S4 locked on his side of the river. Hmm. So yeah, both off lane is at least getting decent amounts out, out of their lane. The Clockwork Zai also, just a solo support line, unable to completely zone him out. Also focusing a bit more on going through some early pulls. It's like potentially Puppy lining up mid lane for a Fisher, but unless Ketchik pushes really far forward and you can block the ramp. All right. Fairly quiet so far. Zai, what level is he up to? Level three now in this off lane. So as you mentioned, a pretty good time for him. Ohio closing in on level three also. Looking at the Axe's farm, still quite strong, even with the rotations around to the top lane. He's getting pretty much everything he needs out of this lane. Support Phoenix though, Johnny. Not getting a hell of a lot. <laughs> yep. So for, for the two teams, it, do, it is a s pretty sizable early game CS advantage going Malaysia's way. All three lanes, they're getting good farm on their core heroes, and that's something Secret have to be a little bit concerned about. The Earthshaker rotations so far have not really amounted to too much, and as a result, we're seeing Secret, at least early game, deficit for them. Yeah, so far. Oh wow, almost into the four figures already. But they do have the late game secured, at least uh, on paper with this lineup. Uh, Team Malaysia have to keep this momentum through the mid game. And that, that's the tricky part here. Ohio closing in on those tranquil boots. Has that ring of regen. Curious what build this Lesh will go for this game. He went for a lot of tangos, had to chew through most of them so far. Just sitting on brown boots. What are you thinking here, item wise? Probably just your straight bloodstone. It seems. Like you want to get as early as possible so you can start racking up the big high, high charges. Uh, and unlike a Storm attack. Spirit who maybe wanted to stop off a Norkid, Lestrak can just go straight forward. He really wants to tank up as well, so mm -hmm. I think that's where it's a, a big item pick up. Yeah, BKB, Aghanim Scepter, other items that come to mind. Let him get into that front line and be a little less susceptible to all the lockdown. Top Illusion Rune picked up by the Viper, and that'll be a bounty down bottom picked up by Zai. S4, still struggling a little bit here, but with the rune control, he's had time to at least get a couple of CS and get those Necromastery uh, stacks going. All right, so I have to see if the Team Malaysia look to start stacking up their jungle anytime soon for the Axe, but it seems like with the lanes going as well as they are, they don't necessarily need to. They're in no rush. They're winning the lanes because they're keeping their supports in lane. Phoenix is spending more time top, Lion zoning out the clockwork a bit bottom, so... Speaking of top, Ohio getting harassed pretty hard here. Puppy comes in with a fissure, but Ohio lands on the other side of it. LSA is on the mark, but Arteezy can't do anything about it. And Ohio will be fine. Yeah, no points in the blink strike yet. Not that he probably wanted to blink in there anyways, but for Malaysia, it's just going to be about sitting back, get the Tranquil region, kicking in for Ohio, getting back full HP, and every little bit of mana getting thrown out is mana that's not being returned. Ketchikimba in the mid lane goes in for the kill. He ignores the courier once as for will get us for there first blood. To your Viper mid. Very sneaky. Nicely done with that wraparound. 
Smart play to go for the first blood over the Courier. And I think he kind of knew that S4 was not backing off. His crew was going to be coming back, and he was ready to flank him. Top lane, meanwhile, high in 1v3 scenario. Has the help of the Fiends with the Fire Spirits. The HP regen, though, is not going to be enough to kick in. Kuro gets low, but... Yeah, one of the drawbacks of the support Phoenix there. Not really so much he, uh, Johnny could do to disengage. KYXY does rotate up. Split Earth off the mark, but Puppy taking a lot of damage. That's a level 3 Lightning Storm. Will they be able to find the kill on Puppy, though? It's looking unlikely. Icarus dive down for another 15 seconds, but the lightning's there, and Puppy dies. Now, Arteezy could be in a rocky situation here. He's got the leaner to back him up, throws the dagger, blink forward onto the lash. KYXY goes down, makes it a one for one. Are we done here? It looks like Arteezy will back off as Ohio has come back to the lane. Meanwhile, mid lane, S4 getting low once again. Viper continuing to be aggressive. S4 will be able to refill his bottle from a Urshik at Back up either. top, Artor, he's in some trouble. Do they actually have the damage here? No, not quite. I think the Tango might be enough. It's going to be close, Parker, and it's not. Arteezy goes down. He was like 2 HP short, maybe, of surviving that one. Whew. A lot of aggression in this top lane. Very surprising was the less track TP. KYXY is suddenly up there, and trading his life for a support kill was not the outcome he was hoping for. No, certainly not. But he has picked up Arcane Boots as his first item. You'll see some less racks go for early phase boots just to harass a little more in lane and have that movement speed, but... Here, KYXY wants that mana sustainability. It does feel like Malaysia getting a lot more out of this early game. Just looking at some of these, like, a support Phoenix already level 5 can offer a lot. The Fire Spirit damage as well as just the extra slow you're getting out of it. You've got your Lestrak who, yeah, he dies that one time, but he's at least getting some good farm. But it's just great distribution of levels and farm right now on the Malaysia side. It's not like it's all in on your core heroes. Your support's in a pretty good place. Your Lion's also level 5. On the secret side, you're just not quite getting those same kind of XP. Yeah, absolutely. S4, does he have anything to, to go back to here? Looks like he did have a stack in the jungle, but has cleared it out. He's picked up his power treads now in the mid lane. Starting to recover a little bit, but still feeling the hurt from that early death. And what's Viper looking at here? Looks like he'll be the mech carrier this game. Headdress already in tow. And that'll mean more team fight potential here for Team Malaysia. Some sneaky plays coming out. Ketchik in by the mid lane is getting nice and tanky here. Has the treads, Ring of Akala, building towards the mech as you'd expect. And just looking to guarantee that he stays kind of nice and bolstered up as far as his HP goes. All right. Looks like we'll see some movements around the map here. Down bottom, KYXY still just farming away. Up top, Ohio getting very aggressive on this tower. Arteezy all by himself, and now the TP's come in. Ohio, he doesn't seem too scared, but maybe he should be. In the bottom lane, KYXY will get a solo kill on the Zion. Whoa, Axe just gets blown up as Secret rotate. Johnny has an Icarus dive, and he'll use it to safety. Now on the other side of the fight, they get the kill on the Kuro. Looks like Ketchik and Mushi will be able to make it out here, perhaps. S4 hasted up, he should be fine. Yeah, he'll S4 his way back towards the mid lane, and... Ketchik in, but decent rotation from him and Mushi. Mushi made a nice little sneaky play. He TP's away from the bottom lane to mid lane, smokes up with the Viper, but... Oh. Unfortunately, couldn't find a big kill. So, Lesh there? TP's out. That was a close call. Zai yeah. went for a point-blank hookshot to interrupt the TP, and... That was about half a second short. Okay. That's a hook shot on cooldown. So early game, Viper is definitely winning this mid lane pretty heavily. Getting that one solo kill makes a big difference, not to mention just the kind of free farm Ketchigimba's had here. So he's going to have a very good mech timing. S4 treads one, yet to see what item he's going to be going for. Maybe looking for the mech for his team as well, but that's going to take a lot longer to come online. Yeah, maybe a necessity here. There isn't really anyone else who can farm the mech in a timely manner. Maybe Zai could look towards it, but it looks like Urn will be in his future uh, with two gauntlets already picked up. And I think if Malaysia will continue fighting, they'll need that mech to really have a chance in this mid-game, or uh, at least a good chance. But at the same time, the Yule Scepter, maybe the slightly better choice for S4 in terms of recovery farm, once you uh, spam out those, raises a little more, clear out stacks, and find that recovery. Okay, so let's we'll see what the next move is going to be for the two teams. Johnny gets a D-Ward off at top lane, so denying Team Secret some much-needed vision here, and they're going to look to rotate heroes in, so... Team Secret need to be careful. They're not quite getting the farm they want in their lane, and Malaysia have not got a late-game lamp. They're going to be looking to keep getting aggressive, keep applying pressure on a Team Secret. Mm -hmm. 
Arteezy still trying to find some farm in the safe lane, but it's not so easy for him. Ohio rotating in. Now the smoke gets revealed. They jump on the puppy. He seemed pretty unaware, and they will find an easy kill there. In the lane, Arteezy slowed down by the battle hunger. will survive for now. Harassing back Kuro and Secret on the back foot. We'll just retreat to their tier two tower, and I think Malaysia will claim their first tower of this match. Yeah, this is just not a composition you can fight into at this point. You've got Supernova in play. You've got Finger of Death on your line. Two big ultimates, and on Secret's side, you haven't got level 6 on either support, even like a, I mean, Urshik is level 3 anyways, and this is just not a hero that, even if he had a level 6, could do all too much. Malaysia are ready to fight constantly now. They've got the less track rotating in, they've got Viper with a double damage rune, mech completed. They're just bringing in everything to this top lane, and yeah. at this point, Secret are going to have to let probably multiple towers just drop for free. Well, they'll certainly let the tier 1 up top go down as they rotate towards the mid lane. They put a little pressure on themselves. Do Malaysia go for a tier 2 here? And it looks like they won't. KYXY will TP home after clearing out that creep wave. Secret just looking to pressure and farm the other lanes where possible. They find a Viper in the mid lane, but I'm not sure that's a hero you really want to try and go on at this point with how tanky he is. Yeah, absolutely. Down bottom lane, Mushi just trying to leech some XP. He is level 6, uh, soon to be 7 actually, and the quest for that Blink Dagger begins. We've seen some Lions uh, secure a Blink Dagger in that 10 to 15 minute window. Mushi not farming quite as much um, as he could be perhaps, so Blink Dagger's still pretty far away. But having these early levels is almost as important. Yeah, absolutely. Just having level 6 already at this point, level 7 even, and... See so what Malaysia looked to do with this. Normally you want to try to use that Finger of Death as early as possible, which was the plan at top lane. They just didn't need it to get the one kill they got. Yeah. Mid lane, meanwhile, Puppy going to be brought down. KYXY, solo kill for him. The TPing and Clockwork missed the hook shot as well. Oof. Harsh. KYXY, looks like Bloodstone will be on the horizon with that point booster picked up. Soul Ring also in tow, so plenty of mana for him. Going for that Lightning Storm primary build, so spammable now. A few patches ago, it was increased in terms of DPS, uh, damage and cooldown. Ooh. Money changes. If you have the mana pool, huge damage output. Yeah. Bottom tower so Malaysia is going to now pressure the bottom lane with the mech on Viper in the front lanes. Kechikimba, going to bring this tower down low. There is a glyph available on the secret side, but doesn't seem to be something they want to go for. Mid lane. Dyer's bottom tower has been denied. Bottom tower ends up getting denied by the Phantom Assassin. Could have maybe done something else there if they had a hook shot available, but was on cooldown from that whiff in the mid lane just about 40 seconds ago. S4 does move into the mechanism, so it looks like Secret will try to bring some fight here to Malaysia, or at least stand their ground and save their towers. Helps beef up S4, puts him at 11 armor now. He's feeling a little bit more safe. It really feels like Malaysia just going from tier 1 to tier 1. They go top, then they push out the bottom lane. They've got the less track mid who's just spamming out the, the lightning to keep the creep lane pushed, but no full commitment yet to try and go for this T1 mid tower. So Gloves of Haste now picked up on the Viper after he's got his treads. Is he thinking Midas? You just straight Midas the late game, I think. Okay. You've, you can get this big kind of... Off of this, I imagine Malaysia right now, 4,000 net worth lead. They play things right. They can take down all the outer towers, secure Roshan, get about a 10k gold lead, maybe closer to a 12k gold lead. But that's not going to win them the game. That's not going to allow them to breach high ground. Then they can look to starve out Team Secret, use map control to their advantage, pick up a gem, and use something like a Minus and a Viper to get this Viper to a really scary late game state. So okay. I, I think it's just a good way of securing the late game now that you've already won the early to mid game. Well, yeah. I mean, they haven't won the mid game yet, but they're in a position to do so. Yeah, I, I like this style of building the Viper so you're very tanky early on. We'll hold that thought as S4 gets jumped on trying to clear out his Ancients. He'll use his mech. But I don't think it'll be enough. Certainly not. Ohio gets credit for that one. Now Viper Strike comes out onto Kuro. Zai throws down Power Cogs, but I don't know if they're going to help too much. Supernova secures the kill on Lina. Clockwork falls as well. It's a three for nil, and Team Malaysia erupting with some momentum here, Parker. They'll look towards this Tier 1 tower mid. Yeah, just really nice play. They've been waiting to use the Axe Blink Dagger for some time. They've got all these big, scary items. The Mech on the Viper, the Axe Blink Dagger, the Supernova, the Finger of Death, these big spells and items they haven't had a chance to use, so... Finally, we see him come into play, and without a doubt, Malaysia much stronger than Team Secret at this point in time. PA is just quietly farming at the top lane, but that's all Arteezy can really do at this point, and do have to worry about Team Secret. What, what's, they don't have a good answer to this aggression coming out from Malaysia. I don't know what it's going to be. Yeah, Arteezy pulling up a lot of gold here, in the well into the four figures, I should say. And 
I don't know, what's the play here? Is this a Battle Fury kind of game? Is it just all about survivability? Go for maybe an HOD and just look to get combative? Mm. Normally we see the Battle Fury out from Arteezy. I'm not convinced this is the best Battle Fury game. Maybe just a Helm of the Dominator, stack your Ancients, and yeah. also you can fight pretty well with Helm of the Dominator, but... Yeah, Battle Fury can be a really good combative item if you have that early edge. The damage boost it gives you actually lets you fight a little bit, but in a situation like this, he's just going to get blown up. There's just too much damage. You jump in on that Lesh, Pulse Nova's going to come out, you hit by the Lightning, Diabolic Edict. I mean, maybe just a, an early BKB could be what he looks at, but at the same time, Malaysia have a lot of counters to the BKB. Viper Strike, Axe, and everything he brings to the table. Blink Hex eventually when uh, that's a possibility on the line. Looks like it'll be delayed even further as now Mushi making a detour into what looks like a medallion. Ooh, interesting little pickup. I guess we're going to have some ways to secure an early Roshan. Talked about their, their general game plan of taking all the outer towers, taking Roshan, getting map control, but taking Roshan is not something that this lineup does well at all, so... Getting him a medallion, a nice oh, time to do no. that. Oh, S4 walks right into Ohio. He's hiding in the tree line. Catch a Gimba's there as well. S4 will fall. Can't even get off the double Requiem. Zai hook shots in. Now he'll just try to TP out. No Berserker's call, and he will indeed survive. But they get that high value target, the Shadow Fiend, in the grave for 40 seconds. Yeah, just no good way of. Uh, this is a game where this Clockwork is going to struggle for the rest of this game. He can't really counter initiate because. He's too weak. He, he's, yeah, he's too weak. His team as a whole is too weak. He goes in with that hook shot, and it's like, well. All he can do is watch Shadow Fiend die and then hope he doesn't die himself. If he doesn't have a TP there, that's just two kills going Malaysia's way, so... It doesn't really feel like there's any good follow-up to a Clockwork hookshot. The Lean is playing from behind. Earthshaker is just a, a roaming fissure at this point. The Echo Slam is not something we're likely to see come into play at all this game. Mm -hmm. At least not for some time, so... Yeah. It's gonna be tough. Well, Arteezy will go for the Battle Fury. See that broadsword already picked up in the inventory, so... He wants to find some kind of recovery farm. And speaking of big items, the Leshrac already with the Bloodstone. Great timing on that. Sitting on brown boots for now. Did disassemble the Arcanes, but the snowball begins. Yeah. KYXY, he's in a pretty scary place on this hero, so. We talked about how this hero can struggle if he doesn't get all the big tanky items up, if he doesn't get the Bloodstone, the BKB, Ags, whatever it may be. But when you're this far ahead of your opponents, you're, you're looking pretty smooth. Yeah. There's going to be a long window here where KYXY is just a, a hop, skip, and... Hop and a skip ahead of Team Secret. We'll see a couple of Midas's picked up. One on the Viper, as we talked about. I think that's the smart choice. And Phoenix, no surprise there, but Johnny will secure Midas at a pretty good timing. 17 minutes, about on par. Yeah, so at this point, a lot of your lead kind of gets negated by these Midas's in a sense. You've got a 5,000 net worth lead, but you've just spent 4,000 on Midas's. So as far as actually fighting items go, you're kind of on par, but Malaysia's team fight composition and just their general hero structure right now can take any fight they want. They're not worried about getting items to allow them to fight now because Secret PA is not going to offer anything in a fight. Earthshaker, similar story, Beyond the Fissure is not really doing too much, and the SF is also really struggling. Yep. Secret starting to split up the lanes a little bit here. As they do rotate down, looks like they will reveal this Roche. Rocket Flare comes out, Ohio initiates though. Laguna Blade cuts down the line straight away. Egg in a very aggressive position. The Supernova will not go off, but still, it forces Secret to focus it. And now the damage comes out. KYXY in the front line, still alive. Ohio with a beautiful Berserker's Call. Dies to the death Requiem, but a pretty good fight for Team Malaysia. Yeah. A lot of heroes in the grave. And Malaysia didn't actually play that one amazingly well. The Axe initial blink call went in. Finger did not come out from the line in time. Line got taken out too fast. And Malaysia definitely showed that they are a bit on the squishy side there. But dead even trade. Four for four. Both sides getting about uh, 1k in net worth gain okay. there. So break even. But I guess you really call it a victory for Secret as they did stop the Roche. Yeah, and for Secret, as far as the difference between the two teams goes, that kind of uh, at least gets some of their key heroes up to a better place. The PA especially now, completed Battle Fury for Artur. Ooh. This is going to help out his farm a lot right now, allowing him to farm jungle, push out lanes a lot faster. And uh, Team Malaysia have to be a little bit concerned about a fight, even if it was even on net worth exchange. Yeah, exactly. Not a lot of stacks for Artur to chew through, but can very easily close this gap. Lesh and Viper, both at about 8.7k net worth, a uh, little shy of that 9k mark, and Arteezy will just start farming. Puppy also now level 7 on the Earthshaker, so finally getting some ex much needed experience. Mid lane though, S4 jumped on, smoke rotation will catch him unaware, and another kill. That was smart. The secret team thought they were going back into Roshan there. They started positioning 3 4 heroes in the bottom lane by the T2 tower, but it wasn't Roche, it was mid lane. They're looking for the kill first. Another pitiful death requiem there from S4 with only 11 souls in tow. 
Secret scout this one out. They did have the Rocket Flare in the pit, but... Yep, they're positioned pretty well. Hook shot in. Aegis does get picked up by the Clockwork. Dyer also gets the last hit on Roche. Oh, but what a cold stun coming out from KYX to the high ground. They're going to kill everyone here. Doesn't matter if you take Roche and an Aegis. You're about to get team wide. Yep. Zai going to be the last to fall. Loses the Aegis as well. Uh, TZ, nowhere to be seen. It wasn't a fight he wanted to take any part in, and with good reason. Wow. Seemed like a big play at first, but in the end, it definitely not worth it for Secret. It was a big play, and I think it was like, okay, you take the Aegis, and then everyone else gets out, but Axe, Ahio's initiation onto the high ground Beautiful. was just perfect. That was what Malaysia needed. Leshak folded up with a good split earth, lightning storm, and from there, Secret didn't stand a chance of getting out of there alive. He's been finding great Berserker calls all game, even in that last fight before the, the Roshan. He was just right on point. As soon as it seemed like his Lesh was going to die, he hopped in, caught the, the taunt, and then that gave Lesh the little bit of time he needed to do the damage and, and win him the team fight. So, not too bad for Malaysia when it's all said and done. Still holding on to a decent gold lead, kind of plateaued a little bit, and we'll see where they go from here. Still, all the Tier 2 towers standing for Secret, and they have lost a little bit of momentum on that front. Tier 1 towers, pretty easy to take down, but this is where it gets a little more difficult. They need to choose their fights pretty wisely. Ketchik feeling the effects of that. Hand of Midas goes for a Yasha, another great farming tool here. The one thing I think Malaysia probably realize right now is they're not really snowballing off of their big, like, level sixes, as well as just these... The, the kind of the, Going from tower to tower, taking Roshan has not really gone as smoothly as they would have liked. Secret have completely negated the gold gain that Mal was going Malaysia's way. They've got some key kills. And just looking at the top four farmers, both teams with their big two carries are pretty close to each other. It's not really much of a lead going the way of the Leshrac Viper over the PA Shadow Fiend. So while Malaysia as a whole has this gold lead going, doesn't really feel like Shadow Fiend and PA have been shut down despite having five deaths on the Shadow Fiend. S4 is up there yeah. just shortly behind the Leshrac and Viper. And these are much scarier late game heroes. Oh, absolutely. And now the Shadow Fiend has picked up the Yule Scepter so S4 can farm a little more effectively, push out these lanes. Uh, somewhat comparable to the Battle Fury that Arteezy has picked up. So now both of them can find some recovery. Even though there are two hands of Midas's on Malaysia, they still might be able to make this happen. Mushi gets initiated on by Zai. The follow-up is there, and it's an easy kill on the Lion. Can they find a counter kill here? Fissure comes out, pushes back Ketchik, and Zai will just TP Top lane, though. They've run into Arteezy. He's picked up an Oakleaf to make him a bit tanky, but Haya will get him with the Blink Call. I'm not sure they have the damage to get him low enough to get into that Dunk Rate. They're trying to Sunray him down with the Leshrac showing up. That'll be do it. Oh, yeah. Possibly going in for more here. Kuro and Puppy show up in a kind of a bad place here, but a higher. No blink hole available. Another good rotation from KYXY now in the bottom lane. S4 tries to TP home, and he will. Ketchik doing a lot of damage, but can't quite bring him down fast enough. And of course, no way to stop that TP home. Back up top. Puppy initiated on by KYXY. Throws out a fissure, but. Can KYXY actually make something happen here? Out comes the Berserker's call on the Crow after he uses the Yules, and that'll cost him his life. Killing spree now for KYXY. Zai comes in, power cogs down. He'll be all right. Just up to 15 Bloodstone charges already. This is just... That's the one good thing going Malaysia's way. They're getting these kills. They're winning the fights for the most part. Even if Secret are getting trades in terms of farm for the PA elsewhere on the map, you're just constantly boosting up your Leshrax late game potential. You're going to have Boots to travel and a BKB momentarily. And that's probably where Malaysia can look to go back to that snowball. Take the T2 towers, which they've yet to really touch, despite the big early game start they had. Yeah. And I haven't really been keeping a close eye on Mushi's medallion, but has he been using it aggressively or defensively? I feel like putting that buff on Lesh is actually really powerful here. He's now going to go BKB after Bloodstone. His weak point is at only seven armor, but if you can double that with a medallion, all of a sudden, KYXY is this really tanky horse. Yeah. The few times, I think he hasn't had a chance to use it too much because Mushi's actually been caught out a few times. We That's saw him true. in mid lane. We saw him earlier on, so... There hasn't been that big team fight, but I totally agree. I think using that defensively onto the less track in the front lines is a great way to, to use this, even on the axe in the front lines, because once his Berserker's call wears off, he may be going down fast, so... Yeah, he's reasonably low armor himself. Six space with uh, the plus four from the Tranquils. BKB up on uh, the axe, as well as now completed on the Lesh. And Ohio did uh, steal that invisibility rune down bottom from Zai, who was trying to grab it. Malaysia looking for some openings here, but Secret well aware of the Invisible Axe and will react accordingly. It just seems like Malaysia always just kind of that one kind of crucial mid-game item ahead of their opponents here. They've got the BKB now in Ohio, building towards the, what I imagine is a Mantis down the Viper in. Oh, Berserker's call up top, missed on Puppy. 
And now the Phoenix comes in, Icarus dive across, Fire Spirits come out, and they actually have the damage here, they certainly do with the Finger of Death. Yep. And Mushi finds a little bit of vengeance and gets another one up on the scoreboard. So it looks like they may swing now towards this top tier 2 tower. They've already got four heroes up there and could consider bringing in the Viper as well with the Creep Wave now on route. There's just no one who can really fight the Lash Track unless you can initiate and ch chain stun him using the hook shot. Because you can't set, set him up for with a Yule Scepter. He'll just BKB out of the LSA after the Yule goes through. So mm -hmm. you've got to be able to chain stun him from range if you want to try and bring down the Lash Track. Yeah. Very tricky, and he's got this uh, support team behind him where even though Axe has been very aggressive, sometimes your best defense is a good offense, and that's exactly what Ohio's been doing. Lesh runs in, and, and the Axe is able to take some of the heat and open up some more damage potential. Ketchikimba pulling up a lot of gold on this Viper. Haven't seen any pickups since the Yasha. We'll see where he goes next. A lot of options for him this game. I feel like he may even just consider a BKB as well. They can just five men so well around this, they can look to take the fight and take the next Roshan and Aegis. As an answer to the Clockwork Earth Shaker, the Shadow Fiend, most of the Shadow Fiend's damage output at this point is magical in a team fight, so I think a BKB for Viper could be a well-advised item. Tier 2 Tower in the mid lane, taking a lot of pressure. Malaysia continuing to rub a little salt in the wound as well, Secret will lose one more. That makes it 4-1, to one, or pardon me, 4-2 to two in total tower count. RTZ trying to split push in the bottom lane, still finding some decent space to farm. Looks like he may be looking at a BKB himself with Ogre Club in tow. Farming very nicely, but Malaysia starting to uh, tighten the noose a little bit by taking objectives. Yeah, Secret not really ready to farm until at least PA has BKB. He gets hexed up at bottom lane, going for the tier 2 tower, maybe getting too greedy. The second TP coming in is going to be an axe, and Arteezy going to try turn and fight the call, going to pull him back in. Finger of death, here comes your dunk. Arteezy goes down, getting too greedy, does buy and spend his money before he goes down at least. Big rotation from both sides. Secret, they want vengeance. They burst down the axe with the Laguna Blade, but Malaysia They've got support here. There's your BKB yeah. on KYX, so I Secret will Delta split, and it looks like most of them will make it out. Curl will TP home, Puppy, low on mana, does have a lot of stick charges. He'll make it out as well, so ends up being a one-for-one one axe for PA. Good little trade there for Secret. Yeah, not bad, and considering PA doesn't actually lose money there, it's, uh, yeah, it's pretty good, I'd say. Mm -hmm. From All here, right. Team Secret... I still feel like taking fights is going to be difficult. Even with BKB's complete on core heroes, not sure they'll do amazingly well. You've got a level 3 Viper Strike, Berserker's Call to go through BKB's as well, and the big hero that's been problematic is the Lash Track, whose damage output you can negate outside of the Diabolic Edict, which is yeah. not really the problem spell from Lash Track. Yeah, didn't put a lot of points in it early. It's maxed out now as he's level 16, but the damage is... Eh, it just tickles, really. Two BKBs now out on secret, and could be the beginning of the turn. Uh, the gold lead not quite insurmountable, very notable for Malaysia, getting close to the metrics you were throwing out earlier in terms of the mid game. Now is when it gets a little bit more difficult, where they need to take these objectives and need to look towards uh, trying to break high ground sooner rather than later at this point. 30 minutes is roughly when the carries, like your Shadow Fiend, your PA, will really start to take over the game. And even outside of breaking high ground, just putting Secret in a position where they can't leave their base. Take out all these towers, ward aggressively, get a gem. Force Secret just to sit in their own base, get very little as far as farm goes on the map. But right now, Malaysia can't really split push the lanes too well without fear of getting picked off by heroes like Clockwork, like Lena. So as a result, Secret are actually keeping multiple lanes pushed out really well. And Malaysia kind of spending too much time on one side of the map whenever they go for these pushes. Yeah, they'll get that tier two down bottom. And we'll see how they react as looks like just one TP's top. They will push back the lanes for now. No way they're going to be able to break high ground off any kind of push like this. Secret being very cautious here. Oh, fight oh. bottom lane. And they there went it is. in. They bring down Lena. They're looking for Zaya as well. Secret of TP back down to take this fight. High just going to BKB TP. KWX XY probably thinking something similar here. He does have BOTs up now. BKB on cooldown. He'll move into the tree line and he will make it out. Okay. Decent pick off. Uh, that was looking kind of dicey for Malaysia. You had Mushi at top lane who almost got initiated on and then bottom lane. Yeah. It was kind of a 4v5 fight one secret TP back, but really good positioning from Mushi, finding this little cubby in the trees here so that uh, they couldn't initiate on him easily. And Malaysia ended up getting a kill and a lot of TPs back out of that. So very good trade for them overall. 
from here. They're going mean, to kind of be forced to go into this late game state. Doesn't feel like they've got the heroes who can independently split push to allow them to take full control of the map. Going to have to just gear up towards Viper reaching ultra late game status. Even some of these other core heroes. Lestrak has already picked up an ulti orb, so a possible scythe of Vice coming out for KYXY. Yeah, it feels pretty likely at this point. Still on 16 Bloodstone charges. Talked about the BOTs. You know, he's just a little bit more mobile in general. Aside from the buffed up TP scroll, it also is just a great item on Lesh for the movement speed. We've talked about how he wants to be up in, in their faces and makes him a little more difficult to get away from now. There's definitely going to be some concerns about, from, from Malaysia about how they plan on ending this game because Secret are just sitting back, soaking, soaking up the pressure, getting their farm on, and Shadowfiend and PA still keeping kind of close enough that they're in fighting distance here. This next Roshan could be a key focal point for both teams. We'll have to see if Secret give it up, whether they look to contest it, whether the Aegis is something that will allow Malaysia to push high ground, because that's the one thing. If you suddenly get a good five-man push going where the lanes aren't being pushed out by Secret, you could find a high ground siege with Aegis suddenly take a lane of Rax. Well, Roshan gets scouted outside. He did throw a rocket flare into the pit, but it seems like Secret not too interested in this one. Yeah, I think they're confident in their ability to just split push lanes and defend high ground as needed here. Great positioning here from Malaysia as well. Anticipating a hook shot could be coming in to snatch the Aegis positioning so that it's not going to be so easy. Zai finds Ohio. Looks like he interrupted a TP on his mid way lane. back. Meanwhile, in the mid, yeah, KYXY in some trouble. BKB on. And that'll be enough to ensure his survival. Icarus dive across. Now the rest of Seeker just trying to make their retreat. RTZ does make it out as Johnny clinks forward. That's a precious 10 second BKB from him. I don't think, at this point, the BKB duration is on Secret much more important than your Malaysia heroes. As far as, that's what's going to allow Malaysia to stand a chance in the late game, is having short BKBs on heroes like PA, like Shadowfiend. Uh, TZ, that was his 10 second one, went for the last track kill, which would have just been the Aegis pop and doesn't even get it, so. Yeah, Ketchikimba still hanging on to his 10 second BKB charge as well. He's even been pretty active in fights, 4-0 and 8, just hasn't had a lot of pressure on him. Really hasn't found himself in a situation where the mech was not sufficient. Mushi still not looking towards a Blink Dagger, a much different take on the Lion build. We talked about the Medallion, but now Ghost Scepter, his next item pickup. A pretty pricey one, and could basically have his Blink now if that's what he wanted. Yeah, I think he's almost playing too much of that hard five position support right now because yeah. if you're split pushing on Team Secret, the only hero you have to kind of keep tabs on is the Axe. That blink call is the one thing that can punish you when you're split pushing. With the no blink on your line, it's just one less hero to be worried about. Absolutely. So everyone just trying to farm around the map as efficiently as possible. Down bottom, they find S4, a smoke from Malaysia, but Ohio blinks a little bit short and can't catch him with the Berserker's call. S4 will try to TP out. Do they have any kind of stun? They do. The Hex is there for Mushi, and S4 certain to go down. Finger of death to make it secure. Okay. Mushi will get another one. Still, I, it felt like S4 could have escaped that one. If he wanted to BKB TP, it would have worked with the Berserker's call on cooldown. And that's one of those moments where Lion not having a blink almost cost Malaysia a kill there, because his blink Hex Initiation range is much longer than Ohio's. Ohio sees Shadowfiend, but he's like, if I get close enough to Blink Call, I'm, I may pop the smoke. And at that point, Shadowfiend gets out of there, or at least potentially could look to counter initiate with like an offensive Yule Radiant's Scepter or something. So, yeah. attack. it does feel like this line really needs a Blink at some point this game. But Mushi, after that kill, up to 1200 gold, should still be looking at a pretty okay timing on this Blink. Yeah, I think so too. And it's not something that ever gets bad. Blink Hex initiation will be good until the. 60 minute plus stage of this Radiant's game if it ends up going that long. And if it does, it'll definitely be a necessity. Meanwhile, in the top lane, Arteezy does get a tier Radiant's two tower, tower as Team Malaysia fallen. look towards the high ground. They're looking to commit to this. All right, Aegis in tow attack. on the Leshrac. 16 Bloodstone Radiant's charges, BKB at the ready. Attack. Glyph comes out straight away from Team Secret, but now this tower will be exposed. Diabolic Edict doing good damage down to about 50%. Malaysia doing this very cautiously. Top tower is under attack. Making sure not to overcommit and just doing whatever chip damage to the tower they can. We'll take a look at what little vision they have right now. They see S4 and Arteezy. No wards up on the high ground. And Puppy ready to go was smoked up, hoping for a good blink initiation, but Malaysia just playing things slow, sitting back and still looking to commit to this one. As uh, Secret have seen, there's no one teeping back top lane, no one defending, pushing things out up there, so. Malaysia really want to go for this. While they've got the Aegis in hand, they've still got about a minute and a half left to go. They're just going to keep going high ground with the Edict. And there it is. This tier 3 tower goes down. Viper gets the last hit. And they ping out the melee barracks, a sign that they want to stick around, go for the riskier barracks as it will regen. They get it down to about half health. 
Okay, KYX, so I can just Edict BKB this down if he really wants to. Next Edict that's up, but... Here we go. Berserker's call initiation onto Curl from Ohio. BKB's popped a plenty as Malaysia goes in. There's your egg off to the side. S4 will channel an ulti. Lina, the first one to go down, and now they focus S4. Catch a Gimba, initiated on by Zai, but he just gets melted. Seems like Secret just don't have the resources for it. Lina will buy back. RTZ low, tries to Blink Strike back, but he goes down. Now Puppy, slowed up, in some trouble. Yules will lock the Lesh in place. Okay. Oh, back to the focus of the Rax here. There's still no Glyph and KYXY full HP. He did die once. Can they come a second time? Laguna Blade available, but nice full stuff. Gets him out of danger and Malaysia now have an option. They can look to re-engage, but PA buying back is going to possibly deter them from going back in. And yeah, Lena buying back as well. Very costly hold for Secret. They do indeed hold their barracks. Melee and range still standing. But they have to pay some of that hard-earned money for it. Arteezy did pick up a Skull Basher before that fight really started. Also has the Morbid Mask for some casual regen. But looking towards the Abyssal or any kind of an upgrade, even just into the HOD now, and it'll be a little less timely. Yep. Also, so Scythe Advice up on KYXY. And fresh pickups all over the place for Malaysia. Just more and more income. And we're seeing the power. That, the big thing that team fight to me was the supernova. No one even tried to kill the supernova. I don't think they should have either. It was just like, it was right in the middle of things. If your PA or whoever stops focusing other heroes to kill the supernova, you're probably losing the fight. At the same time, that supernova stun in the end caught three heroes, including a BKB PA. And that was a big problem for Secret. That supernova just could not be dealt with, was in the perfect spot. And Malaysia had all the answers ready for Team Secret. Oh. This Viper, so farmed right now. Finds another big item pick up, and boy, is it a big one. Seems going to look to switch their attention elsewhere on the map now. Great vision coming out from Malaysia. They uh, bought a gem, I believe, which is, yeah, on the Phoenix at the time being. So Dire Vision somewhat limited because of this, but at the same time, Secret do have some pretty good wards up all over the map. And it looks like Phoenix will be going for a Shiva's Guard, but we'll hold that thought as mid lane Ohio BKB initiates in onto Kuroki. Now they find S4, he gets hexed up, will now pop the BKB, they focus the egg, and they will find the kill there. Now Ketchikimba goes onto Puppy, uses the Viper Strike. Does he actually find this kill? He does. He gets a double as the Lina goes down also. Looks like the Shadow Fiend falls off to the side as we watch Ketchik and Arteezy duel it out. Looks like Arteezy might get the better of him here. Another nice four staff keeps him safe. Now they reinitiate. Slow him down with the Lightning. Berserker's call, and it's a four for nil. Not even a trade as Malaysia yep. just run over Team Secret. They've just got such a big advantage right now. That was, again, not the most well executed fight. They missed a few things there. KYXY didn't hit his stun on the Hex up Shadow Fiend, so Shadow Fiend got his BKB off. All these things didn't even matter in the end as Malaysia just used sheer item advantage and just this really scary team fight of theirs to great effect. And an abysmal buyback status here for Secret. They had to burn a couple in the last fight. Shadow Fiend is already bought back. This will be a bottom lane barracks at the very least. Maybe even more for Team Malaysia. No Glyph for another minute or so. And no, they'll back out. They'll play this one safe. So a long time left on this PA respawn if they want to keep applying pressure. But it looks like top lane is where Leshrek is going to TP and KYXY says, Let's get some T2s, you know, let's work on, work on some of these next couple of objectives as needed. Man, you thought this Lesh was farmed before. It's a huge net worth bump out of that whole trade, and still a good bit ahead of Arteezy, hovering around 15k with this Lesh sitting at nearly 21. Next item, what's on the courier here? Oh, plate mail for him. I think probably the Assault Karas on the Lesh, and then we'll look towards that Shiva's coming out on the Phoenix. So getting the, the best of both worlds here, and finding some aura items. Yeah. Even double shivers, not the worst thing in the world, but we'll see how things want to pan out here as Malaysia ready to either secure the next Roshan and go for high ground once more, or I think more than anything, just happy to take any team fight Secret present to them. Secret just have not got the best team fight composition right now to tackle what Malaysia are bringing to the table. Axe, Phoenix, Leshrak, Viper with his current set of items is just doing way too much damage. Second four staff comes out from Malaysia, one on the Axe, now one on Mushi's Lion. So not the blink that we are talking about, but still a mobility tool. Yeah. A little more versatile. It's across the board, Malaysia have all the items they really need to take any upcoming fights. 20 Bloodstone charges for KYXY. This is a serious issue. It's a free Aegis at this point. He goes into a team fight, he dies, he's got an instant respawn, can boots to travel back in, and as a result, you could theoretically be going for pushes before this next Roshan if you want to, but... Yeah, this is exactly the way you have to play a position one core less. You need to get that momentum and then work as a team to just never give it up. 
And if you can do that, then, well, 20 Bloodstone Charges at 40 minutes is certainly quite scary. Secret still trying to farm what, or find what little farm they can. Malaysia have to say about that one. Rocket Flare looking to do some scouting here, but Malaysia waiting and ready. Oh, the smoke gets popped by Ohio. Kenji Berserker's call on two. Zai grabs KYXY inside of the cogs. Requiem goes off. Puppy will be the first to go down. It looks like Malaysia could still possibly take this fight. The Supernova goes off as well. Yules on the S4. Beautiful stun from Mushi on two. Finger to bring down S4. They'll lose the Phantom Assassin as well, but Rubik is well. Why did I say Rubik? The Phoenix <laughs> as well as the Axe get taken out. A two for four trade in the end. Not oh, the worst Zai. for Secret, but now Mushi gets isolated by Zai. The Cogs actually push him away. Almost lives, but the Force Staff will finish him off. Will Zai wanted that Zai? gem. It doesn't look like he's going to be able to find it. Not a bad fight for Secret. Axe played that fight ridiculously well, though. The PA accidentally kind of blinked into him, which led to that initial two hero call. He got the full stuff to the high ground as well, and he just stayed alive and was oh so elusive, but still a decent-ish fight for uh, Secret as far as at least trades go, but... Yeah, decent-ish, but the net worth graph is telling a different story here, oh, Parker. Yeah. 25k XP and net worth, the lead for Malaysia right and now. And KYX were not dying, so suddenly he's at 24 Bloodstone charges, as yep. if 20 wasn't enough before. There you go. Basically unlimited mana at this point. I don't think he can just leave Pulse Nova turned on, but he's getting close to that point. Very He's looking to force out a glyph or something top positioning lane. here, yeah. Forcing out a glyph would be a big victory. Puppy uses oh. an Echo Slam on the Singleton Creep. Oh, no. Oh, my gosh. Less than ideal, to say the least. Lesh put inside of the Yules, but will BKB as he comes down. Turns on to Kuro, puts him into the piggy form, and does huge damage. Force Staff will keep Kuro alive for now, but now Zai could be in some trouble. Point blank, hook shot, Laguna Blade, KYXY. He is one tanky pony. He's actually getting out of here, too. Oh, boy. As if more things couldn't go wrong for Secret. Puppy was looking for the Blink Echo on the last track. His Blink wasn't even cancelled by the looks of things. When, after I clicked him right out, as it happened... Just a it, misclick. Just a yep. unfortunate set of circumstances. Oh, boy. Now Ohio, he's got some item progression as well. It just keeps getting better and better for Team Malaysia at this point. You see the items, itemization just continuing to improve, and you look at the Secret inventories and feeling pretty stagnant here. Not really much progression. Yeah, this is a problematic item, especially for your PA. Talked about that BKB is now important they can be, so... From Axe's point of view, well, now he's just got two ways to lock the PA down in the fight. Rocket Flare scouts out Roche, but look at this, Ohio intercepts their train as it heads to the Roche pit. Looks like the rest of the team will come up. Power Cogs to kind of break things up a little bit here. Arteezy blinks forward very aggressively, gets a bash on KYXY. Now the BY, uh, BKBs are used. Phantom Assassin just gets blown up. S4 channels a Requiem now on the run. Is BKB about to expire? Zai puts some Cogs down to try and break up the fight. Ohio almost goes down, but just barely lives. Oh, and he blinks out as well. S4 couldn't find him. Now he's trapped in the corner. He's going to go down. KYXY just leading his team to kill after kill. Beyond Godlike, nothing can stop him at this point. And Puppy could go down here as well. Oh. TP to Cardi. Catch it. He's going to find that. And oh boy. Secret. Probably close to tapping out at this point. The golden experience graph getting worse and worse. Roche 3 should go the way of Malaysia this go yep. around. Kind of what you talk about. A lot of teams just time and time again underestimate this Malaysian cohort. They just. They deliver results on LAN, especially. This oh, is yeah. where. These players have shined in the past. Ohio, KYX, and Mushi, especially on past RNG Sports teams, have just dominated when people didn't really expect the team to be dominant. And now KYXY just heads straight to the top lane. He is the one to pick up the Shiva's guard here. Not the Phoenix, still hanging on to that uh, plate mail. There is a glyph for Secret, so that'll help him out a little bit. They'll use it straight away. Both supports coming up very soon here. Lena will respawn Puppy up in just a couple of seconds. Looks like they will lose a tier 3 tower, though, before the fight even breaks out. Mid-tier 3, the last one standing for the Dire. As KYXY focuses down the range barracks, going for the sure damage here. Pops the Edict, and Secret in a lot of trouble. The Sierra part here as well, is even though they're coming up, their buybacks still not in the best of situations. Yeah, I, and you don't, you can't even be falling back on buybacks at this point. So for Secret, it's you, you buy all you can. Your PA, you, you buy your Bristol Blade as soon as possible. Your SF, you want to be buying whatever items are available to you. If you have to buy back at this point, suddenly this 25k net worth lead is suddenly becoming a 30k net worth lead. You've got to win fights much more cleanly if you want to kind of turn this game around now with four racks down. Way to stay positive, Parker. Still hoping that Arteezy can get an Abyssal Blade this game. I mean, maybe he buys a Midas. <laughs> that, that'd be the Arteezy way. 
There's a chance. Ever so slightly, but there's a chance. Now the Tier 3 tower in mid under Assault. Remember, there's no Glyph here. So KYXY can kind of slow siege this, utilize the Edict. He's in the front lines, has the Aegis of the Immortal with the 27 Bloodstone charges. Can come back to life twice. Now Zai hook shots in. Ketchik Imba gets pushed into the base, but Ohio's right there to follow up. He's got the Berserker's call. Ketchik Imba eats the cheese. He goes right back up to where he was. Lena the first to fall. Now RTZ in a lot of trouble. He'll go down. Ohio off to the side. Will fall to S4. A one for two to get things started, but the tier three's gone down. Malaysia will just focus the structures. They can clear out this lane of barracks. It will be mega creeps, and that will squander most hope that Secret has at this point. KYXY. Oh, yeah. Still looking pretty healthy here, has the Aegis of the Immortal. There's your Supernova on the backside. S4 without a BKB gets hexed up. He will get stunned. And this could be the end of him. Puppy gets stunned up as well. Shadow Fiend falls, so does the Earthshaker, and that's the GG call. It's Team Malaysia that takes game one in this best of three, 44 to 14. Absolutely dominant. 31 Bloodstone charges on KYXY at the end of this game. This is the true power and potential of a core less track all across the board though malaysia just knew when to team fight knew when to push secured a good late game by getting a couple of minus